Hello everyone, so today I am here with a long overdue book review of Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rifka Brunt. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, you know that I absolutely adored this book. Um, I've been raving about it and I haven't had a chance to film a review for it until now, so um, today I'm going to be talking about this. Obviously, like I just said, I adored this novel, gave it a 5 out of 5 stars, and it's one of my new favorite uh, novels, and yes. I'm here to convince you to read this because I haven't met someone who's read this book since I finished it. I just have been looking for someone to talk to about this novel and I can't seem to find anyone um, because it seems like to be one of those novels a lot of people have heard of but no one has read um, and that's just so sad because this book was so amazing. This book follows a young girl named June who is 14 years old when her uncle dies of AIDS and it is set in 1987 which is at a time that um, people still thought that AIDS could be caught just by standing next to a person who has AIDS. It wasn't a disease that was completely understood at this time. Um, so June has to kind of deal with the social backlash of people knowing that her uncle died, has died of AIDS. And also she is kind of trying to discover herself as well as mend a relationship with her sister as well as kind of figure out everything that was going on in her uncle's life because her uncle was the person that she was the closest to and she wants to learn everything she can about him after he's died. And that involves meeting his boyfriend Toby and trying to get to know him um, all while family drama is happening in her own life and she's also just trying to get through high school and school and stuff like that. This book I think kind of wedged its way into my heart in the same space that Three Souls and Wind Up Bird is because this is the first novel that I can relate so much on a personal level to. Sure, like every single YA book, like any girl can read and be like, oh my god, the protagonist reminds me so much of myself or this character reminds me of me and stuff like that. Um, I've had that too, sure, whatever, but this is the first book that I just completely and wholly saw myself in, and I could see myself in June. June is a very weird person. She is, she doesn't have a lot of friends, again her uncle was her closest friend kind of thing. She is very naive, she is very playful, she goes out into the woods and pretends that she's in a medieval land rather than hanging out with friends her own age and stuff like that, and honestly personal time, I was the exact same way. I've never had tons and tons of friends, I prefer just having a couple of really close ones, and I was 100% that girl who, I have woods in my backyard, um, miles of woods, and I would go out every single day after school and just play in the woods by myself. Sometimes I'd bring my cat, um, I just, I enjoyed being by myself and playing games and playing like make-believe and stuff like that. Um, so watching June do these things, just made me go, oh my god, that's little baby Kate. And it wasn't necessarily like a great feeling because June is bullied a lot. She goes through a lot of hard things because of how she is and stuff like that. But it also, I just was able to connect to her on such a personal level. Also something I could connect to June on is that it was never explicitly said, but it was pretty obviously made that um, June is asexual. And just listening to her, so, so, there's several pages where she describes just like wishing that love could be just talking to a person and like you can get married but you don't have to have sex. Like you can hold hands and just talk to each other rather than sex and she doesn't really understand why it has to be this physical thing. And as I was reading it I honestly just wanted to like reach into the page and like give her a big hug and just be like it's okay. Like. I just, I wish someone had been there for me when I was her age, feeling the exact same way, and just someone to be there and be like, yo, it's okay that you feel like this, it's okay that this is how it is, and you're not weird, you're not broken, you're just asexual. Um, and again, this is set in 1987, which asexuality probably wasn't even a thing at that point, I do not believe. Um, but I just, I, as I read that, I just felt so, like... This it was me. This was me as a 14 year old in high in my freshman year of high school. I had no idea what the hell was wrong with me because I was like, 
I am I a lesbian because I don't want to have sex, but then I was like, girls still have sex with each other if they're lesbians. And I was like, I just felt so incredibly alone because I had no idea why everyone was obsessing over sex. And June was the same way. She is just like, I don't understand why this is such a big thing. And I was the exact same way. And reading about her, it just was like an emotional kind of personal punch to my heart. I also connected so much to this book because of the topic at hand. This book deals a lot with the stigma of AIDS, H or HIV AIDS kind of thing, and this takes place in 1987, so it's like, it was at a time where not much was known about the disease, no one really knew how to do anything, like if you got it you died, like you didn't survive if you had AIDS kind of thing. And I have witnessed firsthand in 2016 people still having this horrible stigma against this disease. I was the president of my school's GSA club and every single year we would raise money to go towards a local AIDS foundation to find a cure. And as we were out in our school trying to sell cupcakes and bracelets and stuff to raise money for this foundation, we still got people yelling at us, yelling profanities, yelling um, that F word, like not fuck, but like the other F word that's really derogatory against gay people. Um, we had people like, yelling at us that like why would they give their money to AIDS and stuff like that. And it's just the, the it's, I just, ugh, hearing people still talking about it today, it's, nothing has changed between this novel in 1987 and today. Almost nothing has changed. It's just, people don't care. People still seem to think it's this promiscuous gay men disease. And it's just, it's, it was a very hard topic to read about, but it was one that I could personally relate to, not because I have AIDS or anything, but because I have worked for four years in my high school to raise money to find a cure for it. And I've heard so many stories from the foundation that we give our money to, we've talked to a lot of people who are advocates and stuff, and it was just one of those things that made me go, wow, the world really hasn't changed in about 30 years. I also could connect to this book because I think I've read it at the perfect time. If I had read it any earlier, I think I would have gotten very upset, and I think if I read it any later, I would not have cared as much, and maybe not, that's the wrong word, but I don't think I would have been as affected, because I, too, lost the person I would consider probably the closest to me besides my immediate family, like my brother and mom and dad. Um, I lost my grandma last year, and she was one of the closest people to me. I loved her so much we would talk all the time and it's still very hard and I could just connect to June on the fact that she just lost her uncle who a lot of people would be like why the hell are you so close with your uncle but I could feel that same way. I was like I was so close with my grandma. I know a lot of people are like oh yeah sure I'm close with my grandparents but like my grandma and I we were best friends and when I lost her it was incredibly hard. So I think most people could understand and connect to June on that level, but I think I was able to connect to her so much more because I also had a Toby. I had a Finn, who was my grandma, who had passed away, but I also had a Toby because, just like June, Toby kind of tries to reach out to June and say, like, you were the other person who was so incredibly close to Finn and was such an important part of his life. Um, my grandpa reached out to me. My grandpa is an extremely shy man, and the fact that he was trying to reach out to me and he would try to give me things of my grandmother's and things like that, it just, I could see myself in this book just so, so much because of those different things that I just, I don't know who else would be able to connect on that kind of level because it was almost like, not like word for word, but like literally event for event kind of, of what happened after my grandmother died. Um, was happening to June. So I was just, again, I think this book, I loved it so much because I could connect to it on such a personal level. Overall, this is just honestly one of the best books I've ever read in um, content, but also in writing and themes and like moral values and life lessons kind of thing. Um, this book I just, I think it's incredibly important. I'm shoving it on everyone in my family and making them read it and everyone in my life. And I just really hope that this review has made you guys decide to go out and pick this up because it definitely is a book that needs to be read and needs a little bit more love. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you are interested in reading this book or if you have read this book, please leave down in the comments below. I just really want people to talk about this book because 
There's no one to talk to about it right now. And anyways, I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!